Hey, what's up? Leron here. Today we're gonna have a talk. We're gonna talk about why painting is so hard. So 2020, new year, and maybe you wanna learn how to paint, you wanna learn how to create in a beautiful way, whatever your medium is, and gosh, painting is hard. And I wanna talk about why I think it's hard, and also some of the learning process and learning curve involved in that. So first off, let's begin with why it's hard. I think the idea of being able to represent what you see on paper in an accurate way is incredibly impressive. So let me give you a bit of a different angle here, a bit of a different perspective. Think about it this way. In the past, you had to paint because there weren't any cameras in the far past. Well, not so far, actually. And you had to paint in order to document the thing. So. Imagine that for a second. When you snap a picture, it has all of the, the, these amazing details that, that we were able to develop that kind of a device to capture the moment and essentially be a kind of memory from the past and stay in that kind of a frame. That's pretty impressive. And, and I, I mean, really, that's amazing when you think about it. And to be able to do the same thing with just your two hands and your brain and paint and water and whatever it is you're using is quite amazing. Think about it, like really representing what you see on paper from three dimension to two dimensions is a really impressive skill. And here's the thing, of course it's gonna be hard. Of course it will be hard to represent what you see in an accurate, believable, interesting manner on paper because that requires a lot of different skill set. Skill sets, not only you need to be able to see the thing accurately, you also need to be able to process it and figure out how you wanna show it on paper. And then you have to have the technical skill of doing that, the actual techniques. So of course it's gonna be different. And every one of those stages is a difficult, did I say different? I mean, I meant difficult. But every one of those stages is difficult. So being able to see things accurately and to see them clearly and avoiding all of the optical illusions and avoiding all of the interferences. And if you're working from photo references, then you have the whole thing that the, the photo itself processed the view for you. So now you are removed from it and you have to counter that when you're painting. And then the ability to plan things out and figure out how to put them to paper. That's also very difficult. That's probably one of the most difficult parts that were for me. For me, I think my gift was in being able to see things very clearly and accurately, but then the stage of actually processing it and turning it into a piece of art, and it can be a painting, a sketch, a sculpture, a drawing, a, a poem, that's the difficult part. That's where you have to really gather up all of your true creativity in the truest sense of the word and use that. And then finally, the skills. The skills are hard, or can be hard, but they're more straightforward because all you have to, you know you'll practice and you'll learn them. You know that if you work on producing an even wash, you'll be able to do that. If you're working on uh, all of those different elements or of how water and paint interact, of how to lay down the oil paints with the brush and a different kind of stroke, creating that interest, you know you'll get that. You know that you can learn the color harmony. That is very technical. And you will be able to get that. But the real challenge, I think, comes from the first and second stages. Think, think things clearly and then also being able to plan them out on how you're going to represent them. Okay. Now, I want to talk a bit about the stages the way I see them. Okay. So the first stage would be breaking through symbolism. Um, and, and that is, so if you've ever seen how a kid draws a hand, it's very symbolic. The, the, the kid doesn't know that, or they do know, I don't know, but they don't know that a hand doesn't look like this, like a finger, another finger, and there is actually a structure to it. And if you think about a real hand that looks like a kid's drawing, it's pretty shocking. Like you won't see any hands that look like that because it's a symbol. It's a simplified symbol that's easier to express, okay? Now, I'm not arguing if it's a good thing to draw and paint with symbols. I'm fine with that. A lot of people do it. A lot of different mediums do it. If you read comics, that's symbolism. Uh, a lot of it is symbolism. Disney movies is symbolism. Cars can't really speak. It's symbolism. Um, but I am saying that when you go past that, past the, the, the phase of symbolism, you're able to see things more clearly, which is a bit of a weird experience because you just see them as they are. 
And sometimes the way they are can be surprisingly simple to draw or sketch or paint. And it can be surprisingly different than what you expected. I know it's a bit of a weird space. If you've gone through that process, you may know what I'm talking about. Now, the next stage would be, okay, so I know what it looks like truly. And I can be a machine. I can render it to look exactly as it should be if I learn the techniques enough and I work slowly and patiently. But I don't want to do that. I want to go beyond that. So I want to be able to um, create in, in a way that's not only what is there, but also how I see what is there and how it makes me feel. So it becomes an interaction between me and the subject. And that's, I think, the, the next stage. And that's where kind of I'm starting to figure it out. I'm fumbling and tumbling there, but I'm kind of around that area. And then I think the last stage is once you're, you've done that a couple of times, you already know what to do. It's just about practicing the technique. So more and more and more and more technique. And, and what this does is with every iteration, with every try and with every attempt, you become 1% more authentic, not just accurate. Accuracy, forget about that. We've gone through that stage. 1% more authentic, 1% more personal, 1% more unique, more and more and more and more and more. And slowly, if you do that, and, and I'm, I don't know how to fully how to do that. I'm not sure I know how to make someone more authentic in their creation. I have a couple of tips uh, and it will depend on the person. And it's very personal, but I can say for me that I found a lot of different ways to break through the autopilot mode and doing things as I know they are supposed to be done, whether, rather than how I want to do them, which is the most important part, I think. Um, so I don't know exactly how to teach that, and maybe it's something I will figure out in the following years. I will be happy to figure that out. Maybe I'll figure out a method to do that. Um, but I will say that it is the process. So with time your work becomes truly yours it's no one else's and you can see that with the best of the best the best artists and creators you can tell it's their work of art and it's not a gimmick you can tell it's their work of art and it's fully their expression which is something i want to learn how to do i talked about it in my uh, 2020 goals video as well it's it's i think one of the biggest things i can aim for right now okay so this is it. This is a rather quick video. I just want to share with you the way I see the whole um, uh, why painting is so hard and then what improving in it actually looks like, okay? Because improving in painting is not just about, you know, you learn how to control the wash better or you learn how to uh, how colors work in harmony or even composition for that matter. It's something beyond that. It's going into the more personal, into the more unique and more individual. That's, I think, a more important part of it that um, that I'm really moving in that direction. I hope that makes sense. So uh, this is going to be it for today. So let me know in a comment down below if that makes sense and if you feel like uh, the message uh, came through. Let me know your thoughts on it because I think everyone will see this a bit differently. So I'd be happy to hear it um, in a com comment down below. I'm reading everything even if it takes me time to answer or I don't answer. I'm actually reading the whole thing. Um, because it's interesting for me, the feedback. Um, and with that being said, we're going to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you, it helped you to learn something new or anything like that. Um, and also, if you still haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I have tons of new videos, a lot of these kinds of talking videos, but also painting processes and all sorts of interesting things I think you're going to really enjoy. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Have an amazing 2020, and we'll talk soon.